Hello everyone. And this is the second lecture on the sharp edge injuries. And in this lecture, I will be discussing the medical legal aspects. That what are the most important aspects which are to be studied and which are to be looked for. Like the anti-mortem and post-mortem nature of the wound, which we discuss in, in every wound. That is, it is before death or it has been inflicted after death. So we will have to differentiate at autopsy. Then age or timing of the injury. How old the injury is. Then the manner of infliction. That it is homicidal, suicidal or accidental. Then kind of weapon. Sometimes the injury shape gives an idea about the shape of the weapon, about the kind of the weapon also. Then I will be also discussing the complications, the pathophysiological effects or the complications of the sharp edge injuries. So uh, heading towards the lecture, lecture number two in sharp edge injuries. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. And my channel name is Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokar. Thank you very much. I'm Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokar, Professor of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology. As we're discussing the mechanical injuries, which are caused by the sharp edge weapons. And this is the second lecture on inside wounds. And in this lecture, I will be discussing the medical legal aspects of the sharp edge injuries or inside wounds. The most important is that injury is anti-mortem or post-mortem. Then about the timing of the injuries, how old it is. Then the manner of infliction. It is suicidal, homicidal, or accidental. Then the kind of weapon. Sometimes the shape of the injury, it gives an idea what type of weapon uh, it is. Then we'll discuss the complications, the pathophysiological effects, which are related with the incised bone. So regarding the anti-mortem or post-mortem nature of the incised bone, it is to be known that the whether injury, injury is anti-mortem or post-mortem. They will be showing vital reactions in the anti-mortem wounds, and these anti-mortem uh, reactions are hemorrhage, inflammation. And when there is hemorrhage, we know that hemoglobin is going to stain the tissues and that staining is fixed. That is, it will not be washed away with water. And similarly, the signs of inflammation, the invasion of the inflammatory cells into the uh, wound, these are the anti-mortem signs. So this hemoglobin, when it stains, this is a vital reaction. The signs of healing, signs of repair, and signs of inflammation, these are all anti-mortem signs. So anti-mortem wounds are also gaping due to contraction of the underlying tissues and the elastic fibers. Now about the timing of the injury, that how old a wound is, this we can find out from the gross examination, the color changes which are being shown by the uh, scab or the blood and the healing and the repair phenomena. We can do the microscopy, the cellular image invasion, the type of the cells according to time, we can determine the time of the injury. Similarly, various biochemical enzymes, they can be tested and they can help us in knowing the timing of the injury. I will be discussing these aspects, the pathophysiologic effects regarding the timing uh, in detail after we have all concluded the injuries of all types. Similarly, the enzyme histochemistry, they are also going to help about the time or the age of the bone. When we do the naked eye examination, 
When it is fresh, there is hemorrhage, and up to two hours, the edges are red and swollen. And the blood and the lymph, they are adherent to the edges. There is neutrophilic infiltration. And by 24 hours, there is continuous layer of epithelial cells upon it. And this epithelium covers the wound and above it is a scab formation. In 36 hours, a capillary network is completed. And in 48 to 72 hours, there is epidermal invasion. And in three to five days, the collagen fibers invade and they develop parallel to the blood vessels. And in one to two weeks, the scar formation starts. Now about the manner of infliction, that is accidental, homicidal, or suicidal. The identification of being homicidal, suicidal is based upon the situation, character, and the circumstances. Generally, the presence of incised wound indicates the intent and they should be described carefully. The suicidal are always present on accessible parts of the body. Incised wound with hesitational cuts indicates suicidal in nature and without hesitational cuts may be homicidal. And these are commonly seen in cut throats, the wrist injuries, and light sharp edged weapons are involved usually in these types of injuries, like knife or razor. In homicidal wounds, they can be on any part of the body, and sometimes they are caused by heavy sharp edge weapons. And in homicidal assaults, there these usually or sometimes indicate the relative position of the assailant and the victim. The accidental wounds are on any part of the body. So besides other injuries, the road traffic accidents, sometimes there are sharp objects lying there or within the vehicle, which can cause the sharp edge injury. And they can also occur due to household work, like working in the kitchen with the knife or other sharp instrument, these injuries can be caused. So the manner of infliction, there are other injuries which can be incised, but they are therapeutic injuries, like the surgical wounds, autopsy wounds, which are the postmortem cutting, self-inflicted or fabricated wound. We have to distinct with those. Then there can be defense wound or hesitational cuts. These are various manner of infliction and we will also discuss these injuries in detail. The surgical in scene, as we know, they are on the elective sites, their location, direction, and the hospital notes will tell us that these are the laparotomy wounds or the tricosmy wounds. Similarly, the top scene scene, they are also on the specific elective sites and they are in scenes which are specific for the opening of various body cavities. And they are postmortem cuts and they are showing no vital reaction. Then about the kind of weapon used, sometimes the shape and the feature of the injury will help in identifying the shape of the weapon. If the incised wounds are made by curved weapon, such as sickle, then the pointed end of the instrument will make a stab or puncture and the blade will make a cut wound. And sometimes it has got an untouched area in between because the point is entering like a stab and the edge is cutting and there is an area which is spade area in between. If the blade is serrated, then instead of cutting, it will cause laceration. Wound from the gag portion of the metal or the pieces of the broken glass have similar nature like the incised wound, but the 
they are irregular edges and the wounds are generally bruised. Now about the complications or the pathophysiological effects, they are early complications or delayed complication. In early complication, they are hemorrhagic shock because of the bleeding and sometimes the injury to the vital organ and that can be fatal. So these are the early complications. The hemorrhage is extensive because the vessels are cut, they are not crushed and they profuse bleedly. They will cause the hemorrhagic shock and hypovolemic shock and death will occur. And if there is underlying vital organ, the injury to the vital organ will cause death. So in early complication and in size wound, as they are open wound, the vessels are cut and bleeding is external and it is profuse. And sometimes the bleeding can be extensive and it will cause hypovolemic shock and will become fatal. In delayed complication, there are infections and septicemia. The infection is especially dangerous when it is with the gram-negative or the gas-producing organisms, or if the infection enters into the blood, this will cause septicemia and more graves uh, complications and situations. So summary of this lecture is that we have discussed the medical legal aspects of the incised wound in this lecture and they are uh, about the nature of the injury, whether it is anti-mortem or post-mortem, and we have understood how we can calculate the time and the age of the wound, and we have also understood the manner of infliction, that it is homicidal, suicidal, or accidental, and then we have understood that it can, injury can give an idea about the kind of the background. And we have also understood what are the complications which are within size mode, they can be early or the delayed complications. So thank you very much. This is all about the lecture number two. And in the next lecture, we'll be heading with the other interests.